The NVIDIA RTX 3050 is finally here. Kind of. Is it good? Is it bad? Does it really even matter anymore? Probably not, but we're gonna find out today anyway. Before we continue, this video is brought to you by Manscaped, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. There's no denying it. You're hairy. The last time a girl saw your junk, she thought Bob Ross had been resurrected. And she wouldn't still be traumatized today if you had picked up Manscaped's Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer. It's waterproof, has a cordless charging dock, and features advanced skin safe technology to reduce nicks and cuts, even on your delicate nether regions. It features 90 minutes of continuous use on a full charge, a battery life LED indicator, and a power button that when pressed three times enables a travel lock function. I would also suggest the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer before your gardener starts demanding more money. But let's face it, you're not just hairy, you also stink. You smell like brie cheese in a donkey's butt. Manscaped's Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray keeps your testes smelling their besties. Quite frankly, you need all of these things, and they all come included in Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. For a limited time, you'll also get two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off and free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use code BITWIT at checkout. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video and making you tolerable. Now back to our regular content. This guy, this guy, MSRP 249. That's that's a total joke though. This is this thing's gonna sell for $500 and up. Mark my words, $500 and up, I'm calling it now. It's absolutely ridiculous, but that still makes this the cheapest RTX 30 series card on the market. Trailing behind the RTX 3060, which has an MSRP that's 32% higher than this GPU. That also makes this the cheapest Ampere GPU that you can buy that has support for ray tracing and DLSS, which is fairly important because more and more games are starting to leverage those technologies. And there's some serious benefits there, which we'll talk about more later on. But if you quick specs about this guy, 2560 CUDA cores, boosts up to 1777 megahertz. We've got eight gigs of G6 memory on a 128 bit bus, and it has second gen RT cores and third gen tensor cores. The specific RTX 3050 that I have here is the EVGA RTX 3050 XC Black, which has this dual fan design, semi open shroud there, single eight pin power connector. There's no backplate. I think they are gonna have a slightly higher end model that does have a backplate though, if you can even get your hands on one. And then on the back, we've got three display ports and one HDMI, very straightforward card. It is PCIe Gen 4 by 16. Never thought I'd have to specify that until AMD launched uh, their RX 6500 XT recently. But anyway, this cooler is actually pretty solid. In all of my testing, it never went over 60 degrees Celsius. So it's very easy to stay cool. That's pretty expected though for a card of this tier. There's not a whole lot of power or voltage flowing through it to begin with. Here's a quick look at the testing system that I was using. You can see we've got an Intel Core i7-12900K running stock. I wanted to use a super fast CPU so we don't run into any bottlenecking issues. That way we can just isolate the performance of the GPUs and let them shine to their fullest. Uh, on an ROG Strix Z690E gaming Wi-Fi DDR5 memory, that's uh, 32 gigs of Kingston Fury Beast at 5200 speed, a two terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. We also have a Corsair H150i Elite LCD. Uh, this is a 360 millimeter radiator AIO cooling our CPU with an NZX T E850 watt power supply. This is all being tested in an open air chassis. Uh, well, it's actually inside of a, a 4000X, uh, Corsair 4000X case, but the side panel was off the whole time. And then we also have Windows 10 Pro as our operating system. These are the graphics cards that I tested against the RTX 3050. You can see I've got uh, three NVIDIA cards in total and three AMD cards. I used the RTX 3060. Shout out to Paul, by the way, uh, for letting me borrow his. I did not have a 3060 on hand, but that's the XC Black model. We have a GTX 1660 Ti XC Ultra Black. And on the AMD side, uh, we have an ROG Strix RX 6600 XTOC. Uh, that's just the model name. I didn't actually manually overclock any of these cards. They're all running stock, even though um, I think most or all of these are running factory overclocked. Some a bit more aggressive than others. A Sapphire Pulse RX 6600 and a Gigabyte Eagle RX 6500 XT, which launched just recently. If we take a look at the MSRPs of these cards, I mean, for starters, uh, you know, it goes without saying that MSRP is pretty worthless these days, but it is kind of interesting to see how the cards stack up in, in their respective product stacks and also uh, if, if this actually follows the trend of performance. I mean, theoretically, if these MSRPs are, are reasonable, uh, then we should see performance numbers sort of scale uh, to follow this trend, right? With the RX 6600 XT performing the best because it is the most expensive card at 379 US dollars. The RTX 3050, once again, at 249, that positions it right in between uh, what the RTX, or what the GTX 1660 Ti launched for at 279 back in the day and the more 
recently released RX 6500 XT at just 199. Before we dive into performance though, let's take a quick look at power consumption. This is measuring full system power draw in watts. I just used the kilowatt from the wall. Um, so it is measuring the entire system load, not the individual graphics card consumption. Uh, but here you can see we've got the RTX 3060 being our power hog of the bunch at 346 watts with the RX 6500 XT being our power hero, I suppose, on the opposite side of the spectrum at 221 watts. The RTX 3050 pulled 310 watts, which puts it squarely between the GTX 1660 Ti and the RX 6600 XT. Regardless of which of these GPUs you're looking at though, it seems that they can all be driven pretty easily with a quality 500 watt power supply. And I mean, if you're looking at the RX 6500 XT here, it looks like you probably even get away with something like a 300 watt unit. All right, so instead of dragging this out much longer, I'm just gonna show you guys the benchmarks. We're pretty much ready for the first set. Uh, all the games were tested at 1920 by 1080, but all the benchmarks you're about to see right now are gonna be featuring rasterization only. So there's not gonna be any ray tracing or DLSS enabled for any of these tests. I will be doing a couple of those tests as well later on in this video, but before I get to those, uh, we're gonna circle back, I'm gonna pop back in, talk about the results that we're seeing so far when it comes to just good old fashioned rasterization performance, and then we'll circle back with the ray tracing and DLSS tests. But for now, here's some slides. Woo! Alright, so here's a summary graph of all the frames that were rendered in total across the first five games that we just looked at, and for the most part, performance scales accordingly given the MSRPs of each card, which I've put right over here on the left. Um, so for starters, the RTX 3060 and the RX 6600 are the same price. Uh, but you can see here the RTX 3060 actually performed about 10% faster on average. So it technically makes the RTX 3060 a better value here overall. The GTX 1660 Ti outperformed the RTX 3050 by just 1.8%, which pretty much falls within margin of error. I think at the end of the day, I would say that these two cards are very closely on par with each other when it comes to rasterization performance alone. The RTX 3050 was about 18% faster than the RX 6500 XT, but it costs 25% more, uh, which is pretty fair for the most part. It's even more fair if you consider the fact that the RX 6500 XT uh, was really given an advantage here by being on a Gen 4 platform. If this card was slotted into a Gen 3 motherboard, we would see some performance hit of 15% or higher in some titles as we've seen in countless reviews, uh, simply because of this card's configuration. AMD decided to give it uh, PCIe Gen 4 by 4 instead of a by 16 config, uh, which definitely hampers its performance quite significantly, or it can at least uh, in a number of titles if you're running Gen 3. The final thing to note here is that the RX 60 6600 outperforms the RTX 3050 by quite a bit, a 25% gain there. Of course, it is 32% more expensive, so that tracks. However, we do still have a couple more gaming benchmarks that include ray tracing and DLSS to give us a fuller picture of how these cards stack up overall. So for starters, we've got control here, and for this test, ray tracing and DLSS was enabled for whichever cards could enable them. So the RTX 3050 and 3060 uh, were the only two GPUs that were actually able to leverage both technologies here, which gave them a huge advantage over the other cards in their class. In this case, the RTX 3060 sees a pretty commanding lead over the RX 6600 XT, uh, which is usually faster than it. Meanwhile, the RTX 3050 is actually keeping pace with the RX 6600 for the first time, thanks to DLSS and being able to leverage that AI technology in order to close that performance gap between uh, it and an otherwise much faster card. And NVIDIA is not just flexing on AMD here, they're flexing on themselves. If you take a look at the GTX 1660 Ti, it had miserable performance compared to the RTX 3050. Again, no DLSS support on the 1660 Ti, and we also have current gen RT and tensor cores on the newer RTX 3050, which seems to be doing lots of work for it here. Another important thing is do not let the RX 6500 XT's results here fool you. This was the only card 
card that did not support ray tracing in this game, so it's the only card that ran without ray tracing, giving it a very unfair advantage. Uh, I threw the numbers in here anyway, just, uh, just to show them off. I would imagine that if this card could and did have ray tracing enabled for this test, that we'd probably not see very playable frame rates. Considering the GTX 1660 Ti, which is a more expensive and much faster card, is just barely playable at 41 FPS uh, on average and a 1% low of 29. I mean, it is technically playable, you know, it's, it's over 30 FPS and stuff, but it's probably not gonna be very enjoyable, which is why I think the 6500 XT would just get absolutely crushed if it was under the same load as these other GPUs. And then there's Cyberpunk 2077. I set the RTX settings to medium, and again, all the cards that could leverage DLSS uh, were run with DLSS enabled. In this title, the RX 6500 XT was able to use ray tracing, but not being able to leverage DLSS made the gameplay super potato, as you can see. Uh, in fact, with ray traced effects, none of the AMD cards achieved frame rates that you'd really want to game at. That goes double for the GTX 1660 Ti, giving the 6500 XT a run for its money in the worst possible way. As you can see from the RTX 3050 and the RTX 3060 results, the difference DLSS makes can be staggering. And of course, on the hardware side of things, Nvidia is still a big step ahead of AMD when it comes to ray tracing performance. I mean, a few years ago, making comparisons like this when it comes to ray tracing and DLSS would have been fairly irrelevant for most gamers because when RTX, Nvidia RTX first debuted with the launch of the RTX 2080, it was in so few games that it didn't really matter. No one kind of cared. Not to mention DLSS 1.0 was super disappointing because not only was it really difficult to implement into new games, when it was actually available, the performance just kind of sucked. Uh, but now things are different. Now we actually have a healthy number of AAA titles, good popular games that feature RTX effects, ray tracing, that sort of thing. Um, and that list continues to grow steadily. I don't think that ray tracing is going anywhere anytime soon. I think it's just here to stay. And so it's something that we have to closely look at and test uh, with GP reviews like this moving forward. Uh, also, we've got you know DLSS 2.0, which is pretty damn magical now uh, with its ability to boost frame rates while still sharpening the, the image quality. As I've observed trends in the gaming market over the last few years, I really do think that ray tracing and DLSS uh, are valuable benefits. I don't think they're gimmicky at all. They, they provide a lot of uh, good value to, to gamers, um, and that's just continuing to get better and better over time. I totally understand that not everyone cares about ray tracing, uh, but DLSS, I mean, if you're a PC gamer and you like high frame rates, DLSS is the bee's knees. It, it's seriously amazing. Obviously, in AMD is still working on FSR. There's some work to be done there, but DLSS is already on track to, like, it, it's, it's kind of proven itself to be uh, a really compelling feature that could be a determining factor for a lot of buyers who are faced with an AMD GPU and an NVIDIA GPU that are of similar price. It could be what tips the scales uh, in NVIDIA's favor. And I mean, even if the AMD card is a bit more expensive, like the RTX 3050's ability to match or surpass the performance of the RX 6600 in ray trace titles with DLSS is pretty damn impressive when you consider that the AMD card is 32% more expensive. In the end though, it's a damn shame because the RTX 3050 was supposed to give mainstream budget gamers access to these great benefits, but since no one will probably be able to buy this card at a decent price anyway, this is chalking up to just be another sad GPU launch if you can even call it a launch. Stupid. Um, that being said, for what it's worth, the RTX 3050, in my opinion, performs as expected, more or less, given its suggested price tag and its position in the Ampere family. Uh, so if you do manage to cheat fate and get one of these cards, first of all, congratulations, but you can pretty much expect to see well over 60 FPS on average, 1920 by 1080 high settings, maybe even ultra, who knows. Uh, but that is gonna do it for this review. I try not to make these GPU reviews too lengthy these days because they, they don't really deserve to be dragged on dragged out longer than they need to be. Um, but uh, thank you for watching this video. Toss a like on it if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. I will be seeing you guys very shortly in the next video.